Now from time to time, I like to go back and revisit some of the tools that I've covered in the past. Today is no exception. We're going to be looking back at InstaWP. Now I bought this a few months ago, and since then I pretty much use it almost every single day, but the platform has moved on considerably since my first video. So I wanted to come back and show you how I use it, some of the benefits, and all those kinds of things. So first of all, what exactly is InstaWP? Well, simply it allows you to spin up WordPress in a dedicated environment in around about one second. And that really is the crux of it. However, it does an awful lot more than just that. So let's take a look at how we can start things out and how we can expand upon it and start to use it for lots of different use cases. So once you have an account and you log in, this is the kind of dashboard you'll see. This is a list of all of the sites that I've got. Some are just there for X number of days. Other ones are reserved sites. They'll last as long as I want them to until I disable them and then let them expire. But like I say, that's just the basics. Let's see how quick this actually is. Let me show you then some of the extra features that you have. Let's go ahead and say you want to create a new site. We'll click on add new from here. We can choose what PHP version we want, what WordPress version we want, all those kinds of things. And you can see we can retrospectively go back to previous versions. Lots of different reasons why you may want to do that. The same thing goes for your PHP version. You can go from 8.2 right the way back to 5.6. Great if you want to troubleshoot various different combinations of WordPress and PHP before you update potentially a client site or a site that actually may be running old versions. And then finally, we can choose a configuration. And a configuration is a way of creating a setup that you want to use inside InstaWP and then immediately call that back up and create your new site from that. You'll also notice we've got things from templates, and we'll come back to templates in a moment. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave this, everything else set as it is. We're going to click on Create Site, and I'm not going to speed up the video or anything else. This is real time. Click Create Site. The site is now created. That was around about one second. We now have a test site all spun up with WordPress installed using that server setup. All we need to do, click on Magic Login. That will then take us over into the site, log us in, and we are now ready to start working. So we've now got a completely fresh, clean install of the latest version of WordPress on an 8.1 PHP version alongside all the other things we set up. And that's pretty cool, but we can do more. Let's say, for example, that we want to spin up a site that has a specific kind of setup. In other words, we may have a theme, plugin, and so on installed. Well, we can do that by simply creating templates. And you'll see when we have any site listed inside here, we have these icons over on the right hand side. If you click on this third one, it's save a template. We can click on there. We can give this a name, a description. We can set it to be private or we can set it to be shared. So all you need to do is spin up a site using InstaWP, install all the plugins, themes, and everything else you want to get it configured the way you want. And then you simply come into it inside the dashboard, click the option to save as a template, name it, any description you want, set it as to be private or to be shared, and you're pretty much done. That's all there is to it. So hopping over into the templates section, you can see I've got two templates all set up. I've got a licensed version of Generate Press and Generate Blocks Pro, and I've got one that has it not licensed. So all I need to do to go ahead and install this and spin it up is to go over to the option for plus, create a new site, choose a temporary site or reserved site if you want this to stick around longer than seven days, click on create site. That now takes a little bit longer because it has to copy the files over, set everything up from the template. It doesn't take a lot longer, maybe 30 seconds or so, but it does take a little longer, but it is so quick and easy. And after about 30 seconds to a minute, you can see we now have a message telling us it's already been set up. And again, we can use the magic login. We've got copy link. We can choose the URL, grab the username and password for this site. Let's click on magic login and check what's going on in the dashboard and see if those are installed and activated and all set up. As you can see, we hop over into the plugin section into install plugins. You can see we've got Generate Blocks, Generate Blocks Pro, and Generate Press Premium. There's an update available, so I can run that update if I want to. And if we hop over, for example, into Generate Blocks, into the settings, you can see there's my code is inserted, my serial, and I've also got this set to receiving updates. So it is a fully installed and licensed copy of that theme and that plugin spun up onto an InstaWP server in a matter of around about 30 seconds to a minute. So this immediately saves a huge amount of time. And again, this is literally just scratching the surface of what you can do using this tool set. Now, when you finish with a site, if you don't want to let it expire or it may be reserved, you can go ahead and you can delete it. So for example, if we take this second site that we tested 
test it out, I can simply come over to the three dots, choose the option for delete inside there. This then asks us to confirm the URL we want to delete. So I'm simply going to copy that, paste that underneath and click delete. And after a second or two, you'll see that this now has been deleted and we've got rid of it from our overall dashboard. The other thing is if you want to reserve a site that you previously just created temporarily, all you need to do is click on this little flag symbol. That will ask you, do you want to confirm this is a reserved site and this will not expire after the seven days or whatever time scale is left. Click confirm. That now will go ahead and be reserved. You'll also notice that if we've used a template, it tells us underneath the name of the site what template was actually used. So we can very quickly and easily visually see exactly what templates are used in any part of our overall setup. You can also add tags in, so you can see if we click on there, we can search for tags, we can create new tags, all those kinds of things. So for example, I might say this is for freelance, I'll check it, and I might say it's for Friday, and I'll check it, and now we've got tags associated with that specific website. If you want to go ahead and unreserve this, all we need to do is click on the little flag, confirm it, and then again, you can see now, this now becomes a normal site, and whatever time is left to expire will go ahead and go down to, come down to the expiry. If it's already gone past its expiry date, it will then go into a deleted state. You can restore it if you want to, but you are limited to the number of restores you have based upon the license that you have for InstaWP. And you can see all that information at the top where we've got this little sort of chart symbol. We can find out what add-ons are available, our subscription, and all the different stats to do with our particular account and what we have available to us. Now, there are plenty of other things you can do with InstaWP. If we come over to the three dots, you can see there's a lot more actions inside you. Some of these are locked because I don't have access to them based upon my account, but you can see we can deal with things like versions on here if we want. You can see the PHP configuration, so we can adjust and tweak this to customize it to test various different parameters out. If we want to sort of modify what we're doing on a server and we want to test it out on a site, we can take a backup of it, we can test it out inside InstaWP. There's lots of reasons why you may want to test this out. And again, you can change the PHP version. We might want to just check this out on 8.2. So we can click update and that will then update the PHP configuration for this particular site. There's also a lot more options inside you. If you want to, you can view the credentials so you can find out your login details, those kinds of things if you've lost them. You can migrate this if you want to. And this will then take you over to the migration interface where you can then choose where you want to migrate this to, whether it's going to be a specific host like Bluehost, GoDaddy, WP Engine and so on. Or if you want to, you can use like cPanel, for example, if you have cPanel installed on a server with a hosting account, but not one of these kind of named hosting accounts. And you can go to other hosts. So you can go to the process of migrating a site. So you could use this as a development environment to build the site that you want. And then you can actually send it over and migrate it to a site or a hosting platform using one of these options. You can also come in and you can do things like export. So if we go export, as you can see, we can use local WP. We've got some additional tools inside here, so we can edit the database using PHP My Admin. We can view the logs. We can code edit directly inside here if you want to. So for example, you click the code editor. This will then open up a code editor window for that specific site, and we can see all on the left-hand side all the normal files you have as part of WordPress. So again, you could come in, you could customize things, you could tweak things, and use this as a test environment to make sure that any changes you make are not going to affect the actual live site. You could then migrate it over, those kinds of things. Now, we've also got some extra options which are relatively new. For example, we can actually use staging sites as part of the overall process. If we come over into InstaWP, you can see if we go to the WordPress org repository, there's a plugin called One Click WordPress Staging Sites. Now, I will be honest, this is a little bit clunky at this point in time. It's not necessarily the most ideal way of working, but it does work in a pinch. Now, you may also notice that I've got this launch button. You may be thinking, well, I don't have that, Paul, so what exactly is it? Well, this is another one of those relatively new features for InstaWP. It is a Chrome extension that allows you to go to the WordPress repository, open up themes or plugins, and then spin up a site or install different plugins into an existing site. So for this example, I can click on the launch option, and this will then show me my sites. If I want to browse all the sites, if it doesn't show me the one that I want, it may be an older site, for example, I can click on Browse All Sites, and this will then show me all the sites that I have as part of my InstaWP setup. 
So for this example, I may want to install this particular plugin to create a staging copy of the site we've just created with Generate Press and Generate Blocks installed. So let's click on Install. That now installs that into that particular setup. So let's hop over and take a look at it in the dashboard. So you can see once we log into the dashboard, we now take it straight over to the InstaWP section where we can create a staging site. So let's click on Create a Staging Site. This will ask us to connect up. So we just need to authorize this to give it access to this site. We'll say approve. That will then redirect us over and ask us what type of staging site do we actually want to create? Do you want a quick one where it doesn't copy the media over, which is great if you've got a very big site and you literally just want to make some changes and make sure that the core site doesn't have any problems and you don't need that media, or you can do a full copies all of the files over. For this example, let's use the full because we have next to nothing going on anyway. And you can customize this. You can anonymize your data. We click on Create Stage Insight. That will then connect up to the InstaWP network, go ahead and create a stage insight, copy the files over, whether that's including media or just on its own. And then it'll give us a second site, which we can use as a staging site. And there we go. After a few moments, you can see this now gives us the credentials so we can log in to that stage insight. We can click on Magic Login, open up a new tab, and you can see this will now again open up InstaWP where we've got that identical copy. So let's go and test this out. Let's go and add a new page in. We'll add a new page and we're going to say add new and we'll just call this staging test and we'll publish that page. So now we are in the staging site. We've added some new content in. So you'd obviously, once you've tested things out, update your plugins, whatever it is, you'd want to push this back over to the actual live site and make sure that everything is working correctly. So we can do that in a couple of different ways. The easiest is to come over into your dashboard for InstaWP. Do you want to come over to the Connect section of your dashboard? And this will show you then any of the connections you've got to staging sites, and it'll show you various different pieces of information about it. What site is connecting to? The staging sites. You can see we can click and we've got options to push the staging to production. We can sync it. We can check if it's connected, the time of last activity. We can log into this and we can also go ahead and disconnect it. So for this example, we've made some changes now to that site. So let's just quickly check. This is our original site where we took the staging from. So if you go and take a look at the pages, inside there you see we've got three pages. If we go ahead and quickly take a look at the new staging version, we've got this staging test page. Let's go ahead and close that tab down to ease confusion. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the connections. We're going to click the staging sites. I'm going to say push staging to production. So any changes we've made, we've pushed over to the live production site. We'll just check that, say push stage into production, and that's now going to go ahead and initiate it. And then it may take a few moments, a few minutes, depending upon the size and complexity of your site, but it shouldn't take too long to actually complete the whole process. And after a few moments, we've now got the updated version being pushed over from our staging site. You can see there's our new page, staging test, and if you open that up, you can see there's our blank page with stage and test as the title. Now that's really just kind of scratching the surface of some of the options you have, and it is a really useful setup. Now there's obviously an alternative to this. If you want to check out Taste WP, then you may want to take a look at this and see if this does the same kind of thing for you. The nice thing with this is you can run a sort of free sample on this and you can have sites running for up to two days. But if you want to have the seven days and some of the extra features, you are going to have to pay to use this. You can see if you come into the premium features, for example, on Taste WP, go ahead and take a look at the pricing. You can see this is, if we go to three sites, for example, this is going to cost you $107 per year. So if we take a look at the pricing for InstaWP, you can see you have a free tier, which gives you three sites, a small amount of web space and templates and things like that. But it's enough you can test it out to see if you actually like the platform and it does what you want. And then if you want to upgrade, you've got personal, professional, and you've got agency, depending upon what you're looking for. And you've got monthly and you've got yearly plans. So you can save a little bit if you jump to yearly. It's not up to you. For me, I use this pretty much every day. It's not perfect, and there have been times where there's been some issues with reliability. However, that is something that I think was to do with teething problems, with scaling up with the amount of people that actually jumped on board from the AppSumo deal, which is what I grabbed. It's not a lifetime deal. I still pay every single year. I just pay a lesser amount than the current pricing plan. So I'm still a paying customer. 
But recently, it's been pretty decent and I've had no real issues. It still needs a little bit of refining with some of the extra add-ons and the integrations and how they work. The staging, for example, is not the most polished setup. It can be a little bit confusing as to how it works. And it would be nice to have all of the controls set up in the site that you've actually taken the staging from as opposed to having to jump back and forth and have a few little sort of quirks going on. But all in all, for the price you pay for this and for the ease and flexibility of what it gives you, I think it's worth checking this out. And also Taste WP, try the two out, see which you think is the better platform for you. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.